when you, and it's not even, this is not even about this situation, this isn't life. Like when you lose trust in someone, you know what I mean? It's like a marriage, like you lose trust in someone, it's like hot, you know what I mean? So. Two weeks later, the Sixers traded 10-time All-Star James Harden, and suddenly their title odds seemed bleak. Except, they might be better without him. Philly is off to a great start behind a surprisingly elite offense, thanks in large part to new coach Nick Nurse. Nurse has retooled this offense to empower reigning MVP Joel Embiid like never before, and that's optimized budding star Tyrese Maxey. Last year, a lot of the Sixers' offense was isolation for Joel Embiid. And that can lead to stagnant possessions that aren't as hard to defend because stationary teams are usually easier to guard. But Nurse has moved Embiid out to the perimeter more, where he's a hub for his teammates to play off of, whether it's these two-man games or flowing into handoffs and pick and roll as a way to probe at defenses. Here's a little pitch to Embiid, and he can quickly attack a ton of space before the defense can help, and by that point he's too deep in his free throws. But his teammates can also use him in these spots. Maxi instantly chases the pass for a handoff and an open three. And with the defender sagged off, it's hard to go over this screen, so Maxi sprints into space and takes the clean shot. But when his defender is too close, he can hit Embiid, fake the handoff, and cut back door to get downhill into the paint. If he senses the defender overplaying the handoff, he can fake that initial pass to Embiid and just attack himself, and that's like a warm-up shot. And of course, Joel doesn't have to pitch it back to Maxi, and then he can hit teammates in multiple areas. So there are a ton of flowing dynamic options for Philadelphia when Embiid plays in the middle of the court here. And this is a big difference for a possession like this last season, clearing out and standing around with no easy passing options. When they play off him at the top of the key here, there's a possible screen and handoff for Maxi, and that occupies defenders, so the lane is open for cutters. The next time it's the same setup, the Phoenix defenders are worried about all that movement, and Kevin Durant is sitting on that back cut, so Embiid just attacks the space himself. This approach creates a ton of breathing room, provides easier sight lines for Embiid, and makes it harder to double him. This is the exact same play, Scotty Barnes tries a sneak attack, so Embiid shoots it over for a three ball in the corner, and watch how cool this is. Because Maxi's defender doesn't want to lose him on a possible handoff, when he sets this initial screen, the action requires a third defender to help, and that leaves no one left to box out the corner. All this may remind you of how Denver uses Nikola Jokic. Heck, they love that play with a back pick for a handoff that we just saw. And Denver generates similar effects by leaving the paint open and letting guards play off a superstar center in the middle of the court who can then pass or score himself. Although this Sixers offense uses handoffs so frequently, it's almost like a weave, just resetting on different sides of the court and creating multiple threats in the same possession. On this one, they fake the first handoff to pitch it to Kelly Oubre, and he's able to turn the corner for a dunk. And because of the speed of these handoffs, this defender has to stay on his toes and chase his man, so helping in the paint isn't quite as easy. This can be subtle, but compare it to a play last year where the defense just doesn't have to worry about a possible handoff here out of the corner. So Jaron Jackson Jr. can sit right in Harden's driving lane, and that's not ideal offense. Since Harden isn't really fast or active off ball, even the two-man game could be a slow process. So defenses can load up on them and bog down possessions. Compare that to this year where you'll see stuff like Maxi faking it to Embiid, then flipping it to the corner. It resets back to Joel and he pitches it to Maxi. And all this activity can create a tiny window to attack. So Maxi uses his speed and finishes in the paint. 
Tyrese has benefited from Nurse's coaching as well, because these handoffs tap into his speed and floater game, and we've already seen him pass and chase it to set up that 42% three-point shot. Without Harden now, he's the primary point guard, so his playmaking role has expanded too, which primarily means more pick and roll actions where he can slip it to Joel Embiid on the move. Nurse does a nice job creating space for his stars, clearing the side here and occupying three defenders with these staggered screens, so there's no one left to help on Maxi's penetration. When they run the exact same play again a minute later, two defenders play the ball, so Maxi hits him beat instead. And this is not an easy combination to guard, because if you start thinking about playing in bead too much, Maxi hits the gas and takes it himself. Tyrese looks like he's driving this time, flips to Tobias Harris, and he has a ton of space to attack and finish with his size. And Harris has also benefited a ton from these quick hitting off ball actions. Nurse's concepts help players like Tobias who can slash into open space and finish over defenders without overtaxing their decision making. He's waiting to hit Embiid at the elbow here, realizes Toronto's waiting too, and just drives it down their throats, and that's an easy kickout pass and a great shot. Philly can still fall back on post-ups for Embiid because he's an incredible scorer in these situations. Like, how does he stop like that? Uh, but compared to last season, they've nearly halved their isolation possessions according to Synergy Tracking, replacing many of those stationary plodding trips with better spacing and more movement. Nurse won a title in 2019 with some outside-the-box coaching, famously dropping a box and one on Steph Curry in the finals before spicy defenses became popular. So he'll certainly try stuff on both ends of the floor. In an NBA Cup game against the Pistons, Cade Cunningham started four for four by attacking Embiid's drop coverage to score from the mid-range repeatedly. So Nurse went with a bigger body on Cade and moved Embiid onto a wing to keep him out of the screening action and stay home to protect the paint. That meant if Detroit wanted to bring Embiid into the pick and roll, a smaller, weaker screener would be setting the pick and they could contain the ball without worrying about the outside shooting of someone like Asar Thompson. Philly did stuff like this in the past with Embiid, but I thought the total defensive shift early in the game was a vintage nurse move that immediately deflated the Pistons' offense. And then offensively, you'll see variety like this running the old flex cut on the baseline for Tobias Harris. And when they run the exact same thing again on the very next possession, Atlanta is waiting for it so Maxi can come off another screen and we're back to handoff action. And that draws two defenders so Embiid can attack a recovering defense. And he's a monster with all that space to work with. Now, the third time there are three Hawk defenders thinking about a duck in from Harris or a possible handoff. So Embiid takes it himself while they're distracted. So all this makes the game easier for JoJo because he can see the floor from these spots, knows what to look for, and is pretty good at these kinds of passes. And Nurse is a big reason why he's averaging a career high in assists to start the season. Remember, the Philadelphia offense was really effective with Harden on the court last year, but they've been slightly better to start this season with the Maxi and Bede combination, which is why they have a top four offense. So this really isn't addition by subtraction. It's about rerouting Harden-centric possessions through different focal points like Embiid or Maxi while unlocking peripheral players. Anthony Melton is also a pretty nice upgrade defensively over Harden, so the 76ers offense has remained potent without sacrificing much defense. Right now, they look like one of the best regular season teams in the league, although I don't know what that means come playoff time. What I do know is that they don't really miss James Harden, thanks to Embiid, Maxi, 
and the coaching acumen of Nick Nurse. If you're interested in a deeper look at the X's and O's of this offense, Half Court Hoops has a nice video I'll link below. Philly's up to ninth in offensive pace, and you can find stats like that on thinkingbasketball.net as a Patreon subscriber. For this video, I compared a lot of last year to this year to help find differences in player and team style, and we use that database every day to help make all of our content. Otherwise, thanks for watching this one all the way to the end, and to everyone out there, I hope you are having a great day.